Hi guys, it's Natalie. Today I'm going to color this picture of an owl that I drew. Uh, to color it, I will be using Prismacolor colored pencils. They come in packages like this. You can get them at craft stores such as Michael's, Hobby Lobby, and you can find them on Amazon as well. The paper that I'll be using is Strathmore toned gray paper. Again, you can find this at, on, at craft stores and on Amazon. And I'll also be using a little touch of white paint for reflections in the eyes, and I'll be using a Copic Multiliner, which is just a regular ink pen. You can find those at craft stores as well. I'll actually be starting with this ink pen because I want to color in the pupil of the eye so I can get a true dark color. While this ink pen is very thin, unfortunately is the it is the largest one that I have, so it may take just a moment to fill this in. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them, and I will answer them. And if I don't answer them right away, try asking again, because it's really difficult to see all the questions at once, since they move off the screen rather quickly. Like I said, this is the largest ink pen that I have, so this may take a moment. Alright, after finishing that, I will begin on the coloring of the eye. And the color of this owl's eye, of the owl's eyes, they will be yellow. So I'm going to use a few different shades of yellow. First I'm going to use this bright canary yellow for the brightest part of the eye, and then it will eventually transition into more of a golden color as it reaches the darker part. Uh, Leslie asks, do you use water on the pencil tips? I do not. I've heard of that technique, but I've never actually used it myself. And here's more of a golden yellow that I'm adding. I didn't want to just use the same yellow. I think that the variance in color is really important and it can really make a huge difference in a piece. And here we have an even darker yellow. You may not see the immediate difference on the video, but it definitely does add another dimension to the yellow. And I add a little bit of black just to the shaded parts of the eye. And after adding the black, 
you can shade it over with one of the yellows again. Well, this is more of an orange, but it helps enhance the yellow. And I'll do the same for the other eye. Oops, I think I need to add a little bit more black right here. Uh, Christy asks, do you ever mess up coloring and have to start com over again completely? Uh, that happens to me on occasion. Sometimes I'll start coloring something and just the way that I colored it just wasn't working out and I felt like I had to scrap it. However, usually I I don't like color the darkest color first or like do too much damage to the point where I need to do that, but on occasion it does happen and it sucks, but you learn from your mistakes in doing so. And I'll add a little touch of white with the pencil right here. This seam right there. And I'll color the area around the eye on this particular owl. It has black around its eye. Uh, someone asks, how long is, have you been doing this? Uh, I've been coloring and drawing since middle school. However, I've been focusing on drawing like, people and animals in about... Uh, probably I started doing that my freshman year or late 8th grade. If you guys want to see more examples of my work and other things I do, please check out my Instagram. The link to that is in the video's description. Okay, after drawing some of the outer eye, I guess, like, coloring, I'm going to color in the beak just to get these objects out of the way for whenever I start on the fur. And the beak, I'll be using black, gray, and white to color. Let me locate the gray. 
It's another short pencil of mine. To shade something, it usually is a repetition of layering different colors, like right now I'm doing that with gray and black. I do it until I get the desirable pattern of shade, until it creates that illusion of depth that I want to, to help form the owl's beak. And after the gray and black, I just add a slight touch of white to give it a little bit of shine. And how, I think how I'm going to shade this entire owl and its feathers is I'll start from these facial features. If for example, I'll work out outwards from the eyes and outwards from the beak. And I'm going to start doing that. On top of using black and white for the feathers, I'll also be using browns. However, if the part that I'm working on there isn't that much brown, but I think I will use a little touch of brown between the black and the white to enhance the coloring and help connect it with the rest of the owl because up here and around its eyes there will be a lot more brown for the coloring. Whenever you shade fur or small feathers, um, a good tip for shading is to pay attention to the direction that the hair is flowing. For example, in this owl, the facial feathers that are rather small, they're flowing in one direction, which is going downwards this way on the owl. So to shade that, hold on, let me put down some more white so I can show you. Hopefully you guys can see it well. Unfortunately, I can't zoom in on this once the video has started recording, but a good tip is to form almost 
like little triangles without the base and have the, the tip of the triangle point in the direction that the hair or feathers is flowing. This can apply to many other animals as well that you draw. It's just a good little tip for drawing fur. And the triangles don't even have to be complete, but basically just create strokes in that direction and sometimes they do form triangles because the hair or fur, hair, fur, feathers, whatever, they'll clump together. Uh, to answer Madeline's question, uh, whenever I draw things like realistic animals, I always use pictures because, for example, I haven't drawn owls enough to draw them from my memory. However, people I can begin to draw from my memory. They may not look like anyone in particular, but I can definitely assemble faces from my memory. However, things like this, I can't because I just haven't drawn them enough. But if I spent all day drawing owls, I think I could. <laughs> And reminder for all the viewers, I have an Instagram and the link to that is in the description of the video. Uh, be sure to follow me and if you have questions you can send me a message on Instagram or if you're interested in purchasing artwork from me, send me a message as well. Don't comment on my photos to ask for things like that because it's likely I won't see them because I'll have so many notifications. Uh, Grace asks, is drawing eyes one of your faves? I would say definitely. I really enjoy drawing eyes just because they're so vibrant usually and they're so smooth a lot of times, yet you can find a lot of neat patterns in them, especially if you look up close on an eye, a drawing of an eye. Uh, I drew a picture of a human eye, I think a week ago. It's on Quirky Mama. If you look around, you can find it. You can definitely see the patterns I drew in it, but that was a lot of fun. I really like drawing eyes for that reason. Uh, I, I think a lot of people like drawing eyes. Uh, tell me guys what you think. Oh, tell me, what did I say? Um, tell me what you think. Uh, Sophia, I use Prismacolor colored pencils. Another thing to remember whenever you're drawing feathers or fur, hair, whatever, make sure that your pencils are sharp because you can make a finer line and overall that will enhance the quality of your drawing.
Uh, to answer Pete's question, how long have you been drawing? I've been drawing since middle school. However, I started painting and sketching people and animals like this in ninth grade. Shalyn asks, have you ever drawn yourself? I have before for an art project at school. However, I don't know what I did with that picture. I think I lost it. Or it's somewhere in my closet, which the shelves act as like a storage for my old art. I'll have to look for it. Uh, Aaron asks, what's the hardest drawing you've ever done? Uh, I'm, I'll have to expand drawing to the works of art and it'll, I'd say the hardest piece that I've worked on is this painting that's not quite finished yet. It's of a robot and a person. Uh, I haven't posted it on Instagram yet, however, I, I hope to because I really like the painting, yet I'm not done with it because I keep painting over some of the facial features on the person because I just can't seem to get it right to a point where I like it and that's something that happens to me sometimes is that I just get frustrated with attempting to paint certain facial features and it can take a while but in the end the results are typically very rewarding so I can't wait to show that painting to you guys once I finish it uh, hopefully that would be sometime soon I need to start working on it again I, I started it earlier this year however I've taken a break from it and I think sometimes it's good to distance yourself from a piece that you're working on and you're starting to get frustrated on because it's good to come back with it, I mean, come back to it with a fresh mind. Uh, to answer Monica's question, what are your favorite things to draw? My favorite thing to draw would be people. I really like drawing human faces, human bodies, just anything human it's just I, I feel like it, it's a good accomplishment I feel because sometimes a human body can be very difficult to draw yet at the same time it's very rewarding and it's just so relatable to me I mean because it's a human like what what could be more relatable but I, I really enjoy drawing that if you want to see examples of my human drawings you can check out my Instagram I have tons of pictures of that in fact that's probably the vast majority of the art that I make um, I think that kind of answers another question. Uh, Lori asked, uh, do you draw people too? Yes, I draw people. If you want to see it, go check out my Instagram. On the owl's forehead, this picture of an owl, the owl has tons of different colors of feathers. It's a mixture of white, brown, and black. So I'm just going to start drawing some feathers sticking out in different colors. Right now I'm just doing black and then I'll come in with white or brown. I don't know which order, but I will do that.
and someone asks how long does it typically take you to reply to an Instagram message um, I can say uh, hopefully if you send me a message tonight I can reply tonight however uh, yeah I, definitely if you send me a message tonight I will I will be on Instagram tonight checking however uh, if you send it at any other time sometimes my phone doesn't notify me on new messages and it's kind of weird but I'll have to check my notification settings, but I will get to it within a day or two, so don't worry. Hopefully this weekend I'll be able to go to Hobby Lobby or Michael's and buy myself a new black Prismacolor pencil because this is very short and it can be rather difficult to apply pressure sometimes because it's so short and like if I want to apply a lot lots of pressure I really have to do this and I can't always see what I'm doing so it's not as precise but I do like to use all the pencil get the most of my money for it because they can because Prismacolors can be a little pricey. Um, whenever you're sharpening your Prismacolor pencils, uh, this is something that I'm going to try to talk about in all of my videos for those who don't watch them all, but whenever you sharpen them, try not to use the plastic pencil sharpeners that you buy at like, Walmart or Target just for regular like number two pencils that you would use for school. I would highly recommend getting a metal pencil sharpener like this. However, there is a more efficient method to sharpening pencils, and I think it's called shaving, but it basically involves using a blade, such as the blade of an X-Acto knife, and shaving the pencil to get a sharper tip. Uh, that way, the waste is minimized, and you have a there's a smaller chance of it breaking inside the sharpener. However, this method can be dangerous, so I wouldn't recommend it to younger viewers out there. But if you do want to do that, like have a parent help you if you're young and don't know how to use that. But yeah, uh, I highly recommend getting a metal sharpener over a plastic one. Oh, shout out to Nicole, Emma, and Hallie. Hi guys. Uh, to answer Christy's question, have you always loved art or did you learn to love art? Honestly, all my life I can say I've loved art. I think my love of art is what got me into drawing art because I've always loved to look at art, especially like looking at art online and see people make amazing things, whether it be just like a realistic drawing of something or like fan art of characters that I loved. I just thought it was the coolest thing ever and the art itself kind of inspired me to get into drawing because I wanted to make things like that myself. So I taught myself how, I did a lot of practice, I took art classes in middle school, and I'm currently taking them in high school. Uh, next year will be my last year of high school, and I'm, I'm currently enrolled in IB Art, which is short for International Baccalaureate. It's a really cool international education program, and through the art class, you get to submit a portfolio along with a workbook 
and it's super fun. It's not really instruction based, but it definitely is a place that gives you an opportunity to talk about art with your peers and teacher on like a deeper level than just like discussing visual properties because a lot of what we do in IB art is focused on analyzing the why behind the art, which I think is definitely extremely important and it's something that can make art more powerful. And that's one of my goals for art is to make my art more meaningful. I mean, the drawings I'm showing you guys is mostly for a technique and kind of like the wow factor of drawing animals. However, uh, some of my other works, I, I try to put more meaning into it. Uh, have your drawings ever been exposed in some kind of art fair? Um, I've had a couple of my drawings in art shows that were for my school district. However, that's pretty much it. Mostly things around my, the, like for my school, the city that I live in, there's a few art galleries that we have and there will be like times where, for example, an entire month will be dedicated to like youth art and the schools will submit pieces and mine are in there. And it's really cool to go to these little art shows and see your own art on the walls. Uh, Holly, yes, I buy my color pencils in a pack. Well, actually, I didn't buy these in a pack. They were given to me as a gift. They're second hand, but if I were to have no pencils, I would definitely buy them in a pack if I'm buying tons of colors because that is the most efficient way to purchase them. You'll save a lot of money doing so. However, if you're just getting started or you want to buy just one color, you can buy them individually. Uh, if you buy them individually, I think they cost around $1.75. I'm not sure, I haven't bought one in a while. I need to though. I'll get back with you guys whenever I go to do that. I'll have more accurate pricing. Uh, whenever you go to craft stores, you'll find these displays with small little cubbies and in each cubby is a different color. You can pick out colors that way. Or if you know the name of the color that you want, you can look it up on Amazon and purchase it. Uh, some must haves for drawing, I would say definitely black and white. Then I'd say choose your favorite color if you're just getting started because Whenever you're just getting started with a new art medium, it's good to choose colors that you really like. Uh, for example, like if whenever I like, test out paints or something, I'll pick out my favorite color, which is like a turquoise color, because it's just fun to mess around with and paint with. You know, test your favorite color. That's what I recommend. Uh, Michelle asks, can't you get a pencil extender for your short pencils? Uh, yes, you can. I would recommend doing so for you guys watching. Um, I would do it, but I don't have one. And I haven't been to the craft store in a while, so that's definitely on my craft store shopping list. Uh, however, I'm not too familiar with using them. I think I used them like once in middle school. I don't know if you're able to apply the same degree of pressure, because I know that it appears to be pretty stable um, stable because it, it grips the pencil, but I'd have to try it and tell you guys what I think of them.
Trina asks, what is a good beginner pencil for my youngest, youngish, uh, uh, is it supposed to be youngish or youngest daughter? Um, let's see, uh, Trina, how old is your daughter and are you looking at just regular sketching pencils or colored pencils? Okay, so she's 12 years old. Um, I would recommend getting her just a set of typical, you know, the, I guess you could say like generic colored pencils, uh, but get them from a craft store because usually craft store pencils, even if they're an inexpensive set, I don't have any particular names for you because you can find them anywhere, but even if it's not like an expensive set, it's still good to introduce her, for her to get used to like coloring different things. But I would also say get her a couple of Prismacolors. Like I would say just get a black, a white, and maybe a gray. Just give her a couple so she can get used to like blending and like know the power of blending pencils. It can be a really cool feeling and it can inspire her to go out and use more of them. I know a lot of kids that as young as 12 that use Prismacolors. Um, it's just a matter of like getting used to it and learning to color with it. And the best way to do that is to actually use them. So I would get her a couple of them. I wouldn't go out and buy an entire set right away because that can be really expensive. And if she ends up not liking them, then that's huge loss. But definitely start out with a few of them. At craft stores, you can buy them individually. So just pick out a few colors. Pick out, I would say pick out a black, a white, and her favorite color. Uh, Michelle, this is Strathmore's Tone Gray Paper. This is one of my personal favorites. If you guys have any questions about art supplies recommendations for your children, feel free to ask me. Uh, I've been drawing a lot since middle school, so I have an understanding of like what a middle schooler wants when learning to draw. Uh, one thing I would go ahead and say for everyone is that if your child's in middle school, I would highly recommend getting them a sketchbook that they can take with them to school. So whenever they're in class and say there's quiet time to study or work on other things, they can draw in a sketchbook where they can hold all their drawings together. That's something that I did in middle school. I enjoyed it and it was really cool because it can be a conversation starter too with your teachers and friends and even people you don't know. I've actually made a lot of friends in middle school just by having a sketchbook and kids would come and look at it and they'd talk about it with me. And it was really fun to talk about it with them as well. So I would highly recommend getting your kid a sketchbook. Uh, some of the best sketchbooks to buy would be hardcover ones since they're taking it to school. Uh, the hardcover ones, they last longer, and they're not that expensive. They can be about $10 at a craft store such as Hobby Lobby or on Amazon. Uh, Paula asks, can you use color pencil on canvas and get the same effect? Unfortunately, you cannot because canvas has its own texture to it and it's not smooth like paper is. So you'll have like this square-like texture underneath the pencil and it won't look that good. I mean, you could use it on canvas. However, I wouldn't recommend it 
but you never know that that could be a unique little twist having this canvas like texture but just understand that you won't be able to accomplish the same shading and smoothness on canvas however I do know that you can buy some canvas boards that are actually really smooth and with that you'll probably be able to get closer to the same coloring effect that you'll get on paper but as for large canvases that are like stapled to wood it, it doesn't work that well and besides trying to color on it would be really difficult because you'd have to apply pressure which may puncture the canvas itself or just like put a huge dent in it Uh, Emma asks, have you drawn a monkey? I have not drawn a monkey before, although I think it would be fun. Maybe I might use that as an idea for one of these videos. Uh, Paula asks, uh, how would you protect your work on paper when using colored pencil? Uh, I myself, I don't use any protection for my paper drawings with pencil. However, I do know that you can buy sealers. Uh, sometimes these come in a spray can where you spray the paper. Uh, however, I can imagine that this would be difficult to use on occasion because if the paper is like really flimsy, it may dry funky, but uh, there's that. Or you can do clear coating. However, be aware that this may warp the paper due to the wetness of it. Uh, I don't really have the best advice on this because I don't do it really. Uh, for my painting, so I use it. It protects it. But as for paper drawings, I don't really know too much about sealing it. Uh, someone asks, what do you like better, drawing or painting? I think I like painting just a little bit more because I think that I have a little bit more freedom while painting with the direction of the color and like the layering and everything since you can easily paint over something and it just feels really good to paint. However, I can't really do it on these videos because my paintings, they take hours to finish. Painting a face definitely takes a lot longer than coloring it with pencils but I do enjoy it more. Uh, 
Uh, to Macy, why I started drawing. I started drawing because whenever I was younger, I really liked looking at art and I thought that drawings, paintings, just depictions of things in general, it was just something that was really cool and I wanted to do that myself. I wanted to draw pictures of characters that I liked and just things that I saw in the world. So I learned to draw because that was the way of doing it and I'm really glad I did. Why are you guys talking about Hot Pockets? I just saw like six comments with Hot Pockets. <laughs> I'm very confused. <laughs> Rhodes asks, how often do you need to sharpen your pencils? Uh, that really depends on what I'm doing. If I need the tip to be really sharp, it, I mean, I don't really know how to give a time on this because sometimes drawing seems timeless, but I'd say more often if I need a sharper tip and if I'm just coloring a large area, uh, less often because I can color with a dull tip on a larger area. Uh, Michelle asks, have you ever thought about doing a coloring book? I have. I think it would be a really good idea. If I were to make one, what kind of things would you guys like to see in the coloring book? Like, would you like to see it focused on animals or people? Or, like, what do you guys like? Or would you like something in general? Ooh, before I forget, I want to add reflections to the eyes. I should have done this earlier whenever I finished coloring the eyes, but I can do it now. I'm just using some regular white acrylic paint. If you want to paint reflections into your eyes, you can use any kind of paint. I'm just using some paint that I picked up at Hobby Lobby one day. But this is just a little touch of white to enhance the eyes. Just like that. Uh, the size brush that I was using for the reflections, uh, this is a size 4 round brush. It's really hard to see. Uh, this is a really cheap brush. I don't remember where I got it, but the paint on the outside is chipping off. I personally prefer to get uh, painted or stained wooden brushes or metal ones, just because the peeling paint can get really annoying sometimes, especially whenever it falls onto your painting and you paint over it so it becomes embedded in the piece. But yeah, I would avoid brushes that, I mean, typically these are the cheaper brushes, so I guess you get what you pay for, but pay attention to that and take that into consideration whenever you're purchasing brushes. Uh, Christy asks, how often do you draw? I try to draw every day. Uh, during the summer, I've drawn every day. However, during the school year, whenever it's like exam time, or like crunch time, things like that. I don't draw as often just because I need to do homework and things like that. But yeah, whenever I can, I draw every day.
Uh, Jason asks, how many pencils do you go through when making pictures? Uh, I don't really go through the pencils at all. That's one thing I feel like that's a good question because I can address the fact that Prismacolor pencils, they last a long time. Uh, this set was given to me in December as a Christmas present from one of my friends. And I have, like, most of my pencils are almost at full length. Uh, however, the black, I've purchased blacks outside of the set and the blacks are, they're so short because I've been using them much longer than the time that I got the set. But these pencils, they will last you a long time. That's something to take into consideration when buying them because they do seem pretty expensive, but they will last you a long time. Okay, this will answer two questions. Someone asks, what is your favorite thing to draw and do you draw people? Yes, I draw people and that is my favorite thing to draw. Uh, Rena asks, do the colored pencils smudge at all like granite and charcoal pencils do? Uh, no, the colored pencils, these don't smudge. I mean, the smudge that you could be seeing is just from the pencil, but if you did want to smudge it, you'd have to push down really hard and you'd have to have some kind of moisture on your fingers to help like move around the pigments of it. So you don't have to worry about your hand resting on the piece. Okay, my hand is kind of darkened right now because of the pencil marks that were right here, but those faded. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's visually, it doesn't smudge anything like gr graphite or charcoal will. I've been drawing since middle school to answer Amanda's question. Monica asks, where did you learn to draw? Uh, most of the drawing that I know how to do, it was self-taught and the result of practice upon practice and looking at resources. I do take art classes at school, however, they aren't so based in instruction. It's mostly just uh, a time that I'm given to make art because it's part of my requirements for this uh, art program that I'm in. It's through IB, International Baccalaureate. It's basically the requirements for the class for me to get credit for it. And for those requirements, I just have to submit a portfolio and a workbook, which is just a sketchbook with writing. Uh, to Jamie, uh, for this owl, I'm looking at a picture because I haven't drawn owls enough to be able to draw them from my memory. I think this is the first time I've drawn an owl, actually. Oh wait, that's not true. I drew a quick sketch of one in my sketchbook. I think I actually have it on Instagram, but it's kind of like a background sketch. 
the main focus was a sketch of a person that I did, but the owl was in the background. <laughs> Uh, Jason asks, can you sculpt items like pots and containers? Uh, I cannot. I've tried before, but I, I, I did a terrible job at it. I think this is freshman or sophomore year. In my art class, I used a pottery wheel because I was just experimenting with the clay to see if I can make anything with it, but it, it just, it, it didn't end well for me. I, I just, I don't really like making pottery because I'm no good at it. <laughs> And I think the problem with that is like I expect like the same quality of work from my drawings as I do in sculpture, but that doesn't translate so well because I'm working with something entirely different and I'm making something that's supposed to be so perfect and symmetrical, like a cup or a bowl. But I, I just I I haven't spent enough time doing it and I don't really see myself getting into it because it would take a lot of time and unfortunately I don't have the time for it. it's 10 30 right now and i have to go thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate all the lovely comments that you guys left and it was really nice answering your guys's questions you guys had a lot of really good questions for me tonight so i'll see you i'll see you guys again tomorrow at the same time which is 9 30 central time bye